Yeah, what up, y'all? Speak the Weaver from the Drop a Gem Show, the most infamous hip hop and boxing podcast on the planet. Yo, real quick before this video drops, I just want to let y'all know we need y'all to subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the bell icon. Subscribe because you want to know what's going on with the channel and be part of the Drop a Gem family. The bell icon notifies you immediately when we have a video dropping and we drop several a week. And also hit the like button because it increases the visibility of the show. So we thank y'all for your support. Uh, again, hit the subscribe, like, bell icon, and uh, we we'll catch you on the next video. Peace. Tonight our guest comes from a extremely talented lineage. You might know his father from the legendary group Main Ingredient. His older brother Cuba has classic flicks under his belt. But our guest tonight has classic flicks of his own. Classic TV shows of his own. He's also an MC, and you know I love the dudes with the bars, man. I'm a hip hop dude, man. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, let me bring him in properly, man. The one, the only, Omar Gooding, aka Big O. What's going on, fam? Yeah, sir. What's happening, baby? I'm here oh, in, uh, man, I'm blessed, D-town, man. Right now, in Detroit, man. How you feeling? You good? Yeah. D Town. That's what's up, man. Shout out to everybody in Detroit, man. All right, oh, yeah. man. I just want to thank you for coming on. It's an honor. I'm a big fan, and I appreciate it, fam. Real talk. No problem. All right, man. Let, let's let's get, let's go from the rip real quick, man. Um, L.A. I know you're born out out in Cali. Um, L.A. I believe right in the mid seventies. Yeah. I think we're about the same age. I'm in my mid forties, so I think we're in that same bracket. Um, yeah. talk <laughs> talk a little bit about that experience. What it was like. I come from a big city, New York, so L.A. is kind of the same. What you know, talk about that growing up as a youth. What it was what it was like growing up out there. Growing up in California, I mean, to me, it's all I don't know. It wasn't odd or weird or a big city or a small city for me. Um, you know, uh, being in a musical family with, uh, like you mentioned, my father and my mother also was a singer. So um, right. when I grew up, my father was, uh, you know, he, had, it was, he was coming towards the end of his popularity as a singer, which was in the 70s. Right. Uh, and a lot going off in my ear. Um, so, you know, he was more chasing the money. Uh, 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 you know, on the road a lot, so to speak, as I grew up. Right. Um, so it left me, you know, I really grew up with my sister, my older brother, um, and my mom and myself. And then, you know, we went through a homelessness period where we were just trying to mm. find ourselves and she moved out of her parents' house to try to, you know, my brother to chase my brother's career or aspirations thereof um, back in the day. So then what happened was I went to his agency one day at the age of nine and uh, picked up a script for him while he was waiting out in the car. And his agent saw me and asked if I'd like to go out for some auditions and stuff. And I was like, sure, you know, I know we can need the money. We can use the money. I'm like, hell yeah. So I went out and did my thing. And uh, I did two interviews and booked one of them. And then the rest was history. So my childhood consisted of a lot of work, mm. you know, um, Right. You know, because even even in the homeless period, to me, I didn't really know what was what. So it was a lot of laughing and traveling on the road, different hotels, sleeping in cars, and this and that. It was a big adventure for me. You know, I didn't realize until I got older that we was broke as hell. I was like, this was that was that was it. I had no idea what was what. You know, and then by, by the time I when I landed my first regular job was a, a TV show called um, Wild and Crazy Kids when I was t uh, twelve years old. That ran for three years. Immediately after that ended. I landed a show called Hang With Mr. Cooper, which went for five more years. And then right when that ended, uh, the producers of that show moved on to, to the WB Network and um, and approached me with a show called Smart Guy, which ran for three years on WB and then got picked up for Disney to rerun the same episodes uh, over and over again. But that back then, when you do three seasons, you have 24 episodes. You know, Like right, right. now, I'm doing a series called, <clears throat> called Family Time, and we no do doubt. 13 episodes per season. You know what I mean? Back in the day, it was 20 plus, you know, so we did a lot of TV and a lot of work, um, which took me through high school all the way to get my own place and then, and then beyond. And then, I, you know, when I was 24, I got a call from John right. Singleton about starring in a film called Baby Boy. And that's really where my career pretty much took off in the sense of people being able to take me not only as just a sitcom actor, but also being able to do movies. Um, but when I was in high school, I was able to do theater. I did a little bit of theater. Um, right. And I, you know, I actually won a drama film festival in my senior year. So, you know, I, but after that, I did no more theater until very recently when I linked up with a brother named Jacarius Johnson who wanted me mm -hmm. to um, star in this new uh, uh, theater play that he had 
the uh, idea of after having a meeting with Snoop Dogg, who wanted him to do a play about his life. So mm. um, once I agreed to it, you know, I said, okay, send me the script so I can read it. He said, well, I haven't written it yet. So he wrote it over the next couple of weeks. Um, and then you can see when people that come see it, it's called Redemption of a Dog. It's when I'm out here in Detroit doing, uh, I'll be out here right. for uh, three more days. And then we go to uh, Cleveland for a day. And then we have a break at home. And then uh, we do Virginia, D.C., um, and then we go back to L.A., where we do um, Los Angeles, Long Beach, and then we end in Oakland for now. We also... Um, are doing, and this is shooting? Oakland. You're shooting in all these places? This is this is, this is is the theater called Redemption of the Dog. Oh, right, right. I got, you, I got you. I got you. Snoop Dogg, Tamar Braxton, okay, uh, you, myself, and um, Eric Benet. Yes, yeah, so that, that's how that works. Dope. And then, obviously, then right before, uh, we're going to pick back up in March and do a couple more dates. Uh, they talk about that in Atlanta, talk about some stuff in Vegas. A lot of stuff going on with this play. Um, but then I also have my regular series that I do. Uh, we just finished season six, as I mentioned earlier, that we're going into season Congrats, seven. Dope. That'll close be around to, uh, eight. But, you know. Close yeah. to syndication huh, now since six, season six. Yeah, almost. Close, almost. Close, almost. Right? We only had to get to 83 now. So we, uh, we're about, about two, three, two, three seasons away from locking that nice. in. Um, and then, like you mentioned, we nice. also do music. So, you know, I'm going to drop two packets before the end of this year. Uh, just give it, you know, a lot of, I got a lot of my fans that are actually hardcore hip hop fans. Like, come on, man, stop playing. I was like, all right, man, let me go right. ahead and drop this, drop this on them, and then I'll put a full album out next year as soon as I can take a breath. 